Fox never miss a story or last lap pass by subscribing to the official NASCAR newsletter today. So NASCAR.com slash newsletter. Going to the garage and Marty. Well, Rick, remember how Dale Earnhardt Jr. said a moment ago he was going to sit in the hauler and kind of wait out practice, but he couldn't stand it any longer. Wanted to get out here and hang out with us guys. Got a big high five from Jeff Gordon when he walked up. He is here in the garage area hanging out by his race car. Has talked to a couple of his crew members already as well. You know, and it's funny, Jeff, you talked about his honesty in that press conference. The one thing that I got took away when he was around the media was like he was around, he was around old friends that he hadn't seen in a few weeks. He was happy to see him talking with everybody, so he seems very happy to be here at the racetrack. Certainly, this is is very good therapy for Dale Earnhardt Jr. to be here, but also really good to see his guys as well and talk to Jeff Gordon face to face about a race car and hear those sounds on the track. Jeff, you've had times when you've had to be out of a race car. It's good to be back when you're around the friends, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and I think I think for Dale Jr. you have to remember he's you know he's been in the racetrack since he was a little guy, and and I think uh, this is a place of comfort for you. It's it's where your friends are. Uh, this job is it takes so much of your time that you know you take your friends with you to the racetrack. The guys on the team, they're your friends. You spend a lot of time with them. You enjoy being with them. You you go to battle with them every weekend and. It's, it's, it feels really good to get back and have a conversation. You miss not being in the car, 100% sure, but I think it's, I think it's great to be here and, uh, and have interaction for sure. His doctor called it exposure, being kind of outside of his comfort zone, maybe ramping up the anxiety a little bit. So uh, he's right now trying to do a little therapy here at the track. And we take a look at this track map, Watkins Glen International, and really, we're going to put numbers up here, but that doesn't mean that's what everybody calls the turns or the different areas of this track. Yeah, you talk about out of your comfort zone, you can see this shape of this track, you know, predominantly right-hand corners, but it's downhill into turn one, turn two is the bottom of the S's, three and four. Those are new numbers to me. That was the left S and the right S, then the interlude. I call that the interlude. Turn five is the carousel, six and seven. Somehow I had a nine. I thought you called it the bus stop. Why are you calling it the interlude? Well, because it says there, interlude bus stop. I use the basic interchangeable. In my world, I don't know what three is. I don't know what four is. I don't know what five is. So, you know, just the communication of what corner you're in is something that these drivers and crew chiefs need to work through because, you know, the numerology can change. NASCAR calls those six and seven. That was always the left turn coming to the garage and turn nine for me. <laughs> it used to be 10 and 11, so you went from five to 10. I'm like, did I miss something? How did that happen? But, but and this three and four thing, that's the S's. That's the top of the S's, the bottom of the S's, the middle of the S's. I don't, I don't know the turns. I know who could break it all down. Dave Burns, right, Dave? Absolutely, and Rick, I'm standing in an area now that was known as a garage area. Now it's known as a garage, and I think in the future it's going to be known as a garage. So I don't think we'll have any problems there understanding that. I wanted to point out something that's very common here. We know that they go mostly right-handers here at Watkins Glen. So the fuel fill that's normally on that side is on this side this week. And when you do your visual checks leaving the garage area, sometimes you miss something, which they did a little bit earlier on the five car. As he left and got onto the track, the fuel fill was indeed still uh, capped. And so uh, there's a little, usually a little tether hanging out there that you see it waving in the breeze there. So they brought it right back in, no time lapse. But that wasn't the worst thing for Casey. He's got a mysterious vibration that they cannot find right now. He's been on the track twice, uh, back in the garage twice, and they still can't figure out where the vibration is. So further issues for the five team in the garage. And you can't have mistakes uh, in a situation like Casey Kane is in, where he is struggling for every single point right now outside of the top 16. Casey Kane, 17th. Remember, the name that's not on this list right now and down at the bottom is Chris Busher with a win last weekend at Pocono. If he gets in, when he gets into the top 30 in points, his name will move above Austin Dillon's name currently. And so that will move that line once again to where Kyle Larson will be outside the top 16. Yeah, remember, like we talked about before, this is a repaved racetrack. It's, it, you have to do things differently. So every minute that this car sits in the garage is a minute that Casey Kane and his team are not on the racetrack learning. They were not here uh, for the test. So these these minutes that they're missing, they greatly add up. Hey, Jeff, hey, one thing real quick on Casey. They were here for the tire test. Now, that's not the same thing. You know that. But they did get laps in May here. And actually, when I asked him about the setup uh, that uh, Chase Elliott might have used at the test, his teammate... Um, crew chief Keith Rodden said, well, Chase used our setup. And by the way, Chase was fastest at the test. 
Well, that's teammates working together well, and at that time during the tire test is really important. What I've learned though on a replay, when you come to do a tire test and there's no rubber on the racetrack, a lot of times when you come back, you're like, I wish I had to come to that test. Yeah. Because the track changes so much as the track rubbers up that many times it's, uh, you know, if you think it's an advantage, you're going to go to the tire test. There's been a lot of times that I found it to be a disadvantage. Chase Elliott back out on track. Those of you keeping your eye on Chris Buescher, he's 27th quickest. And David Reagan, 32nd quickest in this first practice. We look at fastest times.